Hello and welcome to Storytime with Mira. Today we're going to go into the history of the Obliviverse. We're going to keep it to a high level overview so it's not overwhelming, but hopefully it'll lend a little bit of understanding to people who can't quite wrap their brains around what's going on. And here we go. In the beginning, in the time before time, there was nothingness. There was a void. And from that void, it was born. It wasn't God. It was just it. It was an act of pure creation. It was logic, creation, and existence given form. And it created a bubble in the infinite void. And in that bubble, it created oblivion. And from the endless entropy, it created the lands, the seas, the birds, the bees. The very first race it created were the ancients. And it watched for countless millennia as they grew and changed. As they evolved and learned to master the world around them, first via fire, then the wheel, then technology, and finally magic. It grew increasingly mystified at its creations because its creations weren't like it. Its creations felt things it did not comprehend. Its creations loved, hated, lived, died. They felt jealousy and greed. They entertained war and peace. All of these facets of reality were foreign to it. It understood creation and destruction. It didn't understand light or darkness, hope or fear, but it wanted to. So it created a second bubble, a second world. This is the world we now call Reichrich. And in the core of Reichrich, it created a massive focusing crystal that would allow it to commune with one of them. It created a crystal capable of holding the enormous will that was it and the endless and boundless power that it wielded and also the core essence of an ancient. So it scoured the world of oblivion. It scoured every inch, every centimeter. It had to find the one that burned the brightest, but it didn't understand the things that it was seeing. It didn't understand that when it chose him, that he burned so brightly because he felt greed and lust and jealousy and hate. It chose Alec, advisor to the emperor of the ancient ascendancy and leader of the rebellion. It didn't understand he was responsible for genocide, for playing the entirety of ancient culture against each other, that he was a snake and a whisperer and a dark man. It didn't know what it meant to be leading a war on both sides. So it came to him in his dreams. It spent weeks, months, luring him to the portal to Reichrich. He came through when he found his way to the crystal at the core of Reichrich. He reached out and laid his hand on it. And in that fateful moment, everything changed. The crystal was not right. It couldn't do what it wanted to do. And in that moment, Alec and it were both drawn into the crystal and the crystal shattered. Alec stood alone in the room surrounded by the 33 crystals formed of the shattering of the focusing crystal. He held one single crystal in his hand, a crystal that pulsated with a sickening purple light. And inside of it, and inside of him were the memories of it. Alec had ascended. Alec had become the first deity. It was gone, but Alec believed that he was it. He, however, was not it. He was Alec Tepesh, deity of darkness. What Alec did not know is that he'd been followed. He'd been followed by Shadrach, second in command of the resistance. And when Alec left the chamber, Shadrach entered. 
He picked up a crystal, mystified by the sight before him, and in that moment he ascended to become the second deity. The crystals, like all things, exist in balance. When you lay your hand on a crystal, whatever exists best inside of you, whatever makes you what you are, is what you shall become. That in combination with what existence needs. So it was only logical that Shadrach would become Shadrach, deity of light. And that is where history begins. The first year of the ancient era, the first year of the ancient war. Things went faster then. Alec laid waste to the ancient culture and released the darkness wave, which killed 99% of the ancients and trapped the rest in giant scaled beast forms to deprive them of their technology. He created the dwarves and the goblins while Shadrach created humans and elves. Time passed, each of them taking members of their cadres to Rikrik. Deities ascended left and right, and the ancient war became the first great war of the gods. The war was long and hard, but Alec won, and Shadrach was stricken down, which led to Lucene becoming deity of light. Lucene and Alec would have attempted peace for thousands of years, until war started once more, over control of the continent of wind. Deep into the second great war, the gods, Lucene and Alec met to negotiate a peace. This month-long meeting accumulated not in peace, but in the conception of a son. The son would become King Tepesh, trueborn. Nearly 70 years later, King Tepesh would cast the forbidden spell given to him by Lucene. The purpose of the spell was to rid the world of Alec's evil forever. But when he cast the spell, it had no effect that they could see. In that battle, Cain was weakened, struck down by Alec. Lucene was killed, and Jubai became the deity of light. Medivh fired the mana gun and split the continent of wind in three parts. Cain was lost for nearly 60 years, but peace reigned. 300 years later, Cain discovered the portal to Scalith. Scalith was a parallel world, a different world, a separate world where magic did not exist. Scalith was ruled by Ophidian overlords who were capable of absorbing the magical energies of oblivion and of the deities themselves. When Cain told Alec of this, Alec felt Scalith was a threat to oblivion, and thus the war between oblivion and Scalith began. Oblivion launched a full-scale investigation sorry, invasion, <laughs> into Scalith, and were repelled over and over. This war lasted nearly 500 years, and Scalith was on the precipice of victory. It was then that the deities discovered the outcome of Cain's forbidden spell. The spell had created an infinite multiverse of worlds, in which, on each world, the spell had a different effect. In Vortex, also known as Earth-1, Alec had never existed, and the world became Earth. In Scalith, Alec had never existed, nor had magic, and the Ophidian overlords rose. In Alhaz, the deities had never existed, and mortals had absolute mastery over magic. In Los Santos, known as Earth-2, Alec had never existed, and the world became Earth. So on and so forth, through an infinite a Bliviverse of Worlds. Alec saw a solution to the Scalith problem. He had every one of the 33 deities lend him their power and created a facsimile of the Darkness Wave called the Apocalypse Wave. However, Mokokoa, deity of life, refused to give his power to destroy a world. Mokokoa, Kain Tepesh, and Domus Tepesh stood against Alec in this, but they could not stop him. Alec unleashed the apocalypse wave through the portal to Scalith, destroying the planet itself. Only one continent was spared that Domus pulled through into the void, into oblivion. But little did Alec know. Medivh, deity of chaos, and Cronarius, deity of time, had sabotaged the apocalypse wave. 
It folded in upon itself, and its wrath was unleashed upon the deities themselves and the world of, of oblivion. As it folded back, it shattered the deities' crystals and killed them. When Valatapesh, deity of death, escaped by having her essence stored in a mortal, and when Els Drinker manipulated Kerwin into rebuilding the crystal of death, when Vala was restored. Domus was driven mad by the loss of life and became a recluse in the void. Cain split himself into four parts because he believed the world didn't need deities and would later be reformed by the dungeon delvers. Alec was stripped of his power and thrown through the multiverse by Domus and Cain before the above mentioned actions. Mokokoas was sealed away by Cain before the above mentioned actions and all other deities were killed and their crystals shattered. This event is known as the Godfall. It took place 2,300 years ago. 250 years ago, when Vala's crystal was reassembled and Cain was put back together by the Dungeon Delvers. Then Merrick and Akash ascended, followed by Zephira, deity of magic. These events were controlled by the mysterious figure Gnarly, whom no one knows the origin of or true nature of, only that Gnarly has led to the reassembling of the crystals that have been used and has handed out whole crystals he's somehow in possession of. There's no record of Gnarly before the Godfall and no one knows who or what he is. In present day, Gnarly appears in Los Santos. He took Corin McCree and Natasha Gath to oblivion. They would ascend to become deity of war and deity of light, respectively. He also would give Declan O'Brien Elves Drinker. 250 years ago, when Zephira and Merrick ascended, they defeated a powerful lich known as Necrobol, who was locked away in an ancient prison in the void. He was later freed from his prison by Bactalif in a bid to ascend from Voidling to deity and conquer all of reality. He arrived in Los Santos following City of Night and became one of the world's greatest threats. This is the very, very, very abridged version of the history of the Obliviverse and the origin of the crystals. I hope you enjoyed story time today. If you have questions, please feel free to ask. See you next time.